guys, welcome to the next podcast. This is the second podcast on the channel. After the podcast, The Sinking of the Bismarck, The Deadly Hunt by William Shaver. But now, it's The Book is Guts and Glory, World War II by Ben Thompson. Okay, so, let's start. Introduction. On June 28, 1919, leaders of France, Germany, Great Britain, and the United States met at an old palace outside Paris and signed the Treaty of Versailles, marking the official end of the First World War, which was just called the Great War before we had a Second World War to compare it to. More on this in here. It had been the but it had been the bloodliest and the most brutal war in human history leaving millions dead and ruining cities and lands all across Europe. For the most part of the war had been drawn, with both sides losing a ridiculous number of men for very little gain. But in the end, Germany's government was the one that finally collapsed in 1918 and was replaced with guys who decided it made sense to stop fighting and end this horrible thing once and for all. The Allied powers, particularly France, were eager to make sure Germany suffered for starting such a terrible war, so the terms of the treaty were more lopsided than a gorilla sitting on a teeter-totter. Big chunks of Germany were cut out and given to France, Denmark, Poland, and Belgium. Germans weren't allowed to have an army bigger than a 100,000 guys, and they couldn't have warplanes, tanks, or new battleships. They had to play they had to pay crazy huge amounts of cash to France and Britain, and sanctions and bills were imposed on them so that they would cripple any economy on earth. German money became worthless, factories closed, people lost their jobs, the country fell into poverty and depression. So you can imagine that to the German people, the terms of the deal were majorly harsh. Sure, they'd surrendered, but they hadn't but they hadn't really lost. No Allied soldiers had even set foot in Germany during the war. Plus, when the Germans were thinking about surrendering, the Allies had promised they'd go easy on them. And now this? What gives? Into this situation stepped a man now pretty much universally accepted as the most evil person in history, Adolf Hitler, the same guy in the Bismarck book the Adolf Hitler guy, a failed artist from Austria who had served as a corporal in World War I, Hitler was, let's say, a little upset that Germany got the short end of the stick in the Treaty of Versailles. Looking at the once proud German people suffering made him so angry that he wanted to kill basically everyone in the world. Hitler was convinced that the leadership of Germany was weak and that the German people had been undermined by Jews and other groups of people he didn't like. Swearing to reverse the Treaty of Versailles, throw the Jews out, retake the lands Germany had lost, and bring the country back to the ranks of world powers. Hitler tried to overthrow the government in 1923, but was defeated and arrested. While in jail, he wrote a book about his beliefs, and before long it was circulating among unhappy Germans. By 1933, Hitler had been released from jail and had become so popular that he was elected Chancellor of Germany. When the president of Germany died a few months later, Hitler merged both offices under the title of Führer, which means leader in Germany. I mean German put himself in that office, and assumed total control over the German population. His first move was to abolish every single political party other than his his own, which was called the National Socialist German Workers' Party, better known as the Nazis, using a combination of powerful speeches, terrorizing secret police forces, and a mega- bombardment of Nazis are awesome propaganda, Hitler walked, worked to undermine the Treaty of Versailles step by step. In 1935, he declared he was going to build weapons whether France, whether France wanted him to or not. 
1936, he moved troops into the Rhineland Demilitarized Zone, a section of Germany with no army or weapons allowed, hosted the Olympics, awarding Germany a ton of gold medals for all kinds of dumb things, sent troops to fight in the Spanish Civil War, and started hardcore cracking down on the rights of Jews living in Germany. In 1938, he absorbed Austria into his lands, which was fine with Austria because they were super into it. Now, the British and the French weren't all that pumped up about the idea of going into another long, bloody war with Germany, so for most part they offered pretty lame opposition. When Hitler decided he wanted to annex or absorb Czechoslovakia, the Prime Minister of Britain, Neville Chamberlain, met with Hitler, talked it over, and was like, Okay, well, I guess you can have it, but only if you promise to stop annexing countries. And Hitler was like, Okay, yeah, sure, sounds good, buddy, whatever you say. Then Chamberlain flew home to tell everyone that all wars were over forever, so hooray. A year later, Hitler launched an all-out unprovoked attack on Poland with one goal in mind. Complete domination and conquest. Britain and France declared war immediately. By the time the war was over, almost 2 billion people from more than 60 countries would take up arms in conflicts raging for, from Cairo, Egypt to Unalaska, Alaska. Yes, there is an Alaskan island called Unalaska, which I guess might have been discovered on opposite day or something. Sixty million people would be dead and wounded in just six years, including 35 million innocent civilians. Atrocities would be committed on never-before-seen scales. Cities would be leveled. Nuclear weapons would be deployed. This is the story of World War II.